After three months of waiting, Amazon has finally released the first feature update for the Kindle Scribe with firmware 5.16.1.2. It brings a few much anticipated functions that many users have been waiting for and Amazon even sent me a press release highlighting the new features. So let's take a quick look and see what has changed. Amazon promised new pen options with the coming updates and here they are. Besides the highlighter, the Kindle Scribe now has four different pen types, which are a normal pen, a fountain pen, a marker, and a pencil. All of these have five different stroke thickness options and work basically exactly as you'd expect. What came as a very pleasant surprise is the pressure and tilt sensitivity that's now available for the pencil and marker. The original launch software only had a very rudimentary pressure levels implementation. It was so simple, in fact, that many people speculated that it wasn't an actual feature, but a bug. When I did the full in-depth review of the device, I suspected that the scribe had the hardware to do more, but was limited software-wise. That suspicion turned out to be true, because now we got the full range of pressure levels you'd expect from a high-end eNote device. Amazon still doesn't say anything about the exact amount at this moment, but my best guess is 4096 levels, which is the same as with most other eNote devices. What that actually means in everyday use is that you can now use the Kindle Scribe for more sophisticated note-taking and sketching with the pencil and marker. We know these features from other devices, so the implementation is nothing groundbreaking for this market segment. However, it's still a very important, useful, and actually incredibly good implementation and was a much needed addition to the Kindle Scrap software. That also means that the mentioned rudimentary two pressure level implementation of the market launch software is now gone. So unlike before, the pen now doesn't change thickness when changing pressure and the fountain pen also isn't pressure sensitive. In addition to the pressure sensitivity, there's also tilt sensitivity, which means that the input on the screen is handled differently when tilting the pen. This is primarily useful for the pencil, but also works with the marker. The new pen types are also available to assign to the shortcut button of the premium pen, which isn't a big surprise, but still welcome since this further enhances the experience with the more expensive pen option. So if you're still on the verge of deciding which version to buy, I'd still advise for the premium pen and suspect that even more options for the shortcut button will be implemented in the future. But time will tell. One other feature which was added with the latest firmware is the jump to page functions for notebooks. With the market launch software, you had to swipe on every page to get from one end to the notebook to the other. From the context menu, you can now select the option and enter the page you'd like to change to. As you can imagine, I'm still not satisfied with that solution because there is no preview when doing so. What's really missing here is a function similar to page flip, which is available in regular Kindle eBooks. With that, you can simply swipe up from the bottom of the screen to show a preview of the page you're about to change to. I'd be really surprised if Amazon didn't implement something like this for notebooks as well in the future. But as of yet, it's sadly not available. But still, the page jump option makes using notebooks so much more convenient and is definitely a welcome addition, even if there's still room for improvement. Another big improvement comes with the option to create subfolders. Sadly, there is no tagging system yet, but subfolders are also a great option to have to help organize your notes. It looks like there's no limit to how many subfolder levels you can create. As you can see, I tried up to 20 levels and can still create new subfolders. So I guess most people won't have any problems with any limitation that might be in place beyond that. The last obvious change is just cosmetic, but still nice to have in my opinion. Amazon added custom screensavers to the Scribe standby screen, which other Kindles don't have. There are seven new screensavers, all of which are a combination of a photo and a sketch. Like I said, nothing major, but still nice to have, especially since they are a welcome change from the default Kindle screensavers we've had for many, many years. To see those new screensavers, just disable the book cover screensaver option in the settings. 
In conclusion, Amazon has delivered on its promise of new features for the Kindle Scribe with the latest firmware update 5.16.1.2. The addition of four different pen types allows for more sophisticated note-taking and sketching. Another much needed feature was the jump to page function for notebooks, making it much more convenient to navigate through your notes. And additionally, the option to create subfolders allows for better notebook organization. While there's still room for improvement, these new features are a step in the right direction and make the Kindle Scrap definitely a better eNote device. There is no telling when Amazon will release the next feature update. But since the first one was published almost exactly three months after the Scribe's market launch, it's possible the company is aiming for a three months release cycle. In the press release I mentioned earlier, Amazon already teased the next features, which will be a lesser tool to copy and paste contents in the notebook and options for better organization and navigation in notebooks. The Microsoft Word integration is also still scheduled for one of the next updates. Please consider leaving a thumbs up if you found this video useful and subscribe to not miss future updates I will cover on the channel. Thanks for your time watching and see you on the next one.